Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Brainstorm Brewery. We survived Vegas somehow. We did it. Barely. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> Hair of the dog, man. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I had to sleep an entire day after the event and then sleep some more to bring this podcast to you all. We're recording this on Tuesday night. As opposed to our usual Monday night, because we've all been recovering for forty-eight hours. I we were supposed recovering. to record in Vegas on like Thursday and didn't do that. <laughs> I haven't got. Some of us have been recovering. Some of us have been stuck in airports, right? Yeah, I got stuck in New Jersey's airport for about six or seven hours, and then my flight got officially canceled when it had just been delayed three or four times. Yeah, the dream. Yeah, right? and then uh, I ended up getting a rental car with like three other random strangers and uh, making the trek back from New Jersey to Syracuse at two in the morning. Got back at six in the morning, um, and then started working on magic stuff and like submitting my article and doing orders. And then I just vented a modern event, and now I'm here. How how random of strangers? Like I met them at the airport. Like not magic players, just like complete randoms. Just old people who were coming up from Florida. It was like a couple, like an elderly couple in their seventies, and then their kid. Wow. Interesting. I mean, like, it, the rental would have been, like, $600 to get myself, so we cut it down to, like, $480 for all of us, and so we split that. And Sure. I guess that's an interesting idea. So, it was a six-hour drive, you said? Uh, it was four hours. We left at two in the morning and got back at 6 a.m. You just, I didn't even know 70-year-olds could stay up that long. Well, the all the flights were canceled, and then... They yeah. uh, sent her to the parking lot, and there was no rental car there, so they had to <laughs> get on so a train. How, wait, wait, wait. So why was your flight canceled? Was it weather? Or was yeah, it, it was weather related. Oh, so yeah, you were just hosed. I mean, I, what kind of weather? Thunderstorms, I guess, in northeast. Hmm. I could see that. We flew yeah, by a bunch so that's, of that that's shit. That's the thing for people who don't know. If if the airline cancels your flight because of an equipment thing or their flight's late or whatever, you're entitled to all kinds of compensation. It's great. They put you up in a hotel, blah, blah, blah. If it's canceled because of weather, you're just screwed. You're on the hook for the hotel. You're on the hook for the car. Like They'll put you on the next flight, but you don't know when it's going to be. Yeah, it's a disaster. You, the, the absolute nightmare is getting stranded by weather. Yeah. I mean, it was whatever. Actually, the absolute nightmare is demons ripping your arms off while your family's flayed alive. But I guess, like, being stranded from yeah, weather is pretty bad, too. Yeah, different concerns, I guess. Am I the only one that worries about demons ripping my arms off while my family's flayed alive? I live alive? in a nice, God-fearing part of the country, so I don't have to worry about uh, that. My only three fears are alligators, crocodiles, and aneurysms. Right? Because an aneurysm can happen anywhere at any time. It's the silent killer, Jason. I'm sure that was some sort of joke or reference I didn't get. Yeah, uh, yep. to a television show that hasn't been funny for three years. So. <laughs> okay, all right. Anyways, there's something way more important. We're going to get to Vegas more later. Uh, <clears throat> however, if you're looking at the video, boom. What are you, I don't, I'm not looking at the video. It's a button. I'm not looking at the video. And it says, I pooped today. Congrats, Corbin. Thank you. It's got a little stick, man. Sitting on a toilet. But you know what's important about this stick man on this toilet? This Tell me, Corbin. Has, uh, this stick man has a little stool. It's got a little stool. And you know what the rest of this button says? It says www. Corbin, you can say poop on the internet. You don't have to say stool. <laughs> Squattypotty.com. We did it, everybody. It's real. <laughs> We've been teasing it for, it feels like a year now. It's happening. <laughs> Brainstorm Brewery is brought to you by Squatty Potty. We are we the number it. two podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the number one magic finance podcast is now the podcast of the number two. Everybody go to www.squattypotty.com slash BSB. Buy yourself a squatty potty. This stool will change your life. We all got sent ours. Buy yourself X squatty potties where X That's is the right. number of turlets in your house. <laughs> yep. Maybe a backup just in Corbin case. Corbin has to get one for every tree. Do you know how hard that is? <laughs> <laughs> Dang. <laughs> I, uh, I've i had my squatty potty for uh, a little over a week now, and I, I, uh, I, I went out home. of town, and suddenly yeah. I had to poop without my squatty potty. And Wasn't it miserable? I, yeah, I just was Did they give the us same. any ad copy to read, or did they trust me? <laughs> they, they said... We think that you know how to reach your fans. Talk to them about poop. So here we are. 
Um, I, I, I got used, put up in I used Airbnb. it for about a week, and it it seems like pooping's easier. I got put up in an Airbnb <laughs> for a week in Las Vegas. Gorgeous house, beautiful pool, but the bathroom was not the same. Yeah, no man, squatty that's... potty. So yeah, we've been we've been pretty tight lipped about this. I told a few uh, content creators in Vegas, but for the most part, we were just giddily sitting on this, waiting for the check to clear. So it's official. <laughs> it is um, official. It took a while. Uh, the people at Squatty Potty have been great to work with. So shout out to them. Shout out to the product. This was awesome. For people, who, I mean, this thing whole this whole thing started just on a whim when I was reading a Reddit AMA some number of months ago, and I was just like, saw Squatty Potty talking about podcast sponsorships, and I was like, you know what? I got a podcast. <laughs> Screw it. Let's talk to him. And here we are. And now you can't say I've never done anything for the podcast. Go buy a Squatty Potty. We can still say it, even if it's not true. We can just create false yeah. narratives. That's not hard. You know, you know how we used to say, buy a Squatty Potty, but not yet? The time has come. Go buy your the Squatty Potty. Now, yeah. Yeah. Go buy a Squatty Potty. And hey, if you want to spread life. out your purchases over the next couple months so it looks like we have more <laughs> suction when they do, and not like a huge wad shooting right at the beginning. It's like, wow, you sold a bunch of units and then never again. Huh? I couldn't hurt too. So. I mean, the but holidays seriously. are going to be coming up. Like, you gotta. No, but seriously, the incredible thing about Squatty Potty here, right? On a completely serious note, as serious as we could possibly be here, um, they they they've been around for however many years at this point, and it started off. They had a great viral commercial that people thought was hilarious. It was a novelty, blah 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 blah, and it was you know like it it was a thing where it was like it was a fad. Everyone was talking about it for a minute because of this sweet commercial, but they're still around. Right, that yep. means that there's it's it the product has to be good. It has to sell itself for this company to still exist. Based on that, you know, all everyone can anyone can come along and, and get lucky on the internet and have a commercial, but to have an actual product that continues to sell years later means you're actually doing something right. So okay, uh, let's not blumpkin this brand too much. <laughs> like Anyways, it's uh, it's here, here's saying. the deal. Here's my squatty potty pitch. You put your feet up on the stool while you dump, and then. It makes dumping easier. Also, share the YouTube video we posted of this. We yeah. uh, went to great lengths, used all of our technical prowess, called in all of our favors, made an epic little commercial to advertise this. So, go our original YouTube. director was fired, and Ron Howard stepped in to finish. YouTube.com slash brainstorm brewery. Check out the commercial, share it, like it, subscribe to it, all that stuff. And I don't know, I think there's probably something else you can do to support the podcast. I'm not Finger sure. blast it, Corbin. Are you a novice oh, at this my... podcast? Sorry. Yeah, the bell icon. Sorry. Take it if to only dinner. Give the old prostate exam. Me. I see. You could also like our you, our Facebook page. I don't know if there's anything else you could do though. You guys have any ideas? Follow us on Twitter. Oh, good one. Good one. Is that it? Uh, I don't know. Here's the thing. There's a lot of free ways you can support this podcast. I know you're like, hey, I keep hearing about this Patreon at Patreon.com/slash/BrainstormBrewery. Oh, I forgot about that one. And I want to give them money, but like honestly, if you just wanted to take two seconds to go to and like our Facebook page, finger blast the bell icon, subscribe to our YouTube channel, just get our numbers up because we know what our podcast download numbers are, and they are respectable for a seven-year podcast. Our uh, YouTube and Facebook likes are lagging behind, so uh, we would like to catch up to people that have, you know, uh, been at uh, the the YouTube's a little longer. We'd like to catch up. We think. Uh, we have a pretty good listenership. So, hey, if you want to, for $0, make us real happy and support us. And uh, be entered into a chance for a giveaway, right? Every couple milestones we're going to yeah, do. Yeah, we announced we announced the last one a couple weeks ago. We'll be doing another one before too long. I got product here to give away. Let's do it. Yeah, so get in on it. Go like our Facebook, uh, Finger Blast, the bell icon, uh, like the, the YouTube. Just, you know, just uh, give us some likes and some retweets and some, you know, some $0 Support. I guess what That'd Jason is saying is you could also go to patreon.com slash brainstorm. Or that. Yeah, we got we got prizes. You guys know about that. That's fine. <laughs> Patreon's a cool thing. We talk about in the Discord that you can access for $1 a month, which is way too low. Also, you get access to a spreadsheet. And here's the cool thing about the spreadsheet. Uh, if you email me asking why you haven't gotten sent the spreadsheet every week, it's because it's 2018 and a single spreadsheet can be updated as a living document and you only need to click on the link once. What? Yeah. So if you... <laughs> Someone's like, I only got the old spreadsheet. Where's the new spreadsheet? Yeah. That's so... how I talk. <laughs> yeah. That's a thing. Anyways, all right. That's enough shilling this week. I Let's mean... breaking bulk. Don't shill where you eat, right? 
Breaky bolt time. Breaky bolt time. Break, break, break. Oh, yeah, breaking bulk. There's so much good stuff. It's a pick. Breaking bulk. The end. White uncommon from an unset. Go. White uncommon from an unset? Little girl. Wrong. Little girl's common, I think. No, little girl's uncommon, okay. I think. That's a good guess. I don't know any uncommons from unset. And that's why this is a really good breaking bulk. Who the hell gives a damn? It's not unglued, is it? It's un It's unhinged. What right? is it? Okay, so you're both just cashing it in the... Yeah, yeah who cares? Okay. Uh, Night of the Kitchen Sink, not B, not C, not D, but A. The A version of Night of the Kitchen Sink is uh, a two-mana, white-white, first strike, protection from black borders. Oh. Yeah, this card is cube unstoppable. This card is $1.86 market price for the normal one and $12 for the foil one. For just for version A, are the other ones worth anything? Not a single goddamn penny. <laughs> That's great. That's great because you get that those nice, people won't actually. even sort them. No, people are just going to be. Oh, it's the night of the what? All the various uh, A versions are left facing, right facing, wackadoodle like unstable bulk is pure garbage except for a very. Where do you few... where do you check to make sure you have the A version? Where on the card does it say which? I mean, it just is? says protection from black borders. It doesn't tell you. You know, there's no. So you don't know, is what you're saying. No, I mean, okay. saying version A, B, C, and D is just a system developed by, like, uh, Wizards. Like, you, you'd have to go to, like, so the it, unstable... They, they don't actually say on the card uh, no. that it's A of no. a possible You'd B. have to go to, like, the They're card like, image the gallery on Wizards' website to see which one is specifically A, B, C, or D. That's really annoying that they did that, and I love that they did it in a, a joke set. Because I feel like other card games would have just done that. Yeah. So only the one with protection from black borders is playable. Um, I, it's obviously twelve dollar foil. Yeah, it's a cube thing. Like you'd obviously play it in a cube sure, that sure, sure. has majority black borders. Um, but it's also probably just being picked up by casual players who are willing to play on cards in their casual unsleeved dirtle games. So, you know, I really like the fact that on on stuff gets used in cubes because. So that stuff doesn't break the game. It's just fun, you know. It's like, oh, I have a booster tutor or stuff like that. I like. Yeah, that. some of them are good. You, there's, there's like the gotcha ones are not fun, but um, yeah, you can pick. That's the cool thing about cube is that you can pick and choose what's fun, and you get to add the best of the unsets while leaving out the uh, the toxic and bad, poorly designed stuff. So unstable is great because everybody opened those boxes, pulled out the lands, pulled out the foils. Pulled out a few certain rares like Urza and whatever, and then everything else got thrown in the trash can. I uh yeah, I still get unstuff in collections. I don't know what to do with all my copies of Night of the Hokey Pokey from nineteen ninety seven. Yeah right. All right, uh, I'll go next. I've got one for you guys here that uh, is a recent mover. It's in I believe it was a uncommon originally. From Tempest, Red Uncommon. A Tempest Red Uncommon, and that was reprinted? It was reprinted, and it is that can't, It, it can't be Goblin, that's way too obvious. Well, I bring this up for a reason, and okay. that reason is that this card is spiking right now, or just spiked, or however you or want to say it. Or two weeks ago. Yeah, sure, right? But uh, it's, it wasn't two weeks ago. It's been moving, it's still in the midst of spiking. Yep. Uh, does anyone know the exact reason for this? No, all right. Well, I there's think new goblins coming. Yeah, I think it's in just a, a very powerful commander card that's slowly starting to dry up. It might have seen play on game nights or something like that. Like maybe there's some sort of streamer uh -huh. or commander uh, content producer who like championed the card that we're not aware of. But like the card right. is just really, really good. Yeah, for people who don't know, two mana and champ, sack a creature, deals one damage, target creature, creature or player. Well, no, um, no, it's just Corbin crazy because it's sack a creature, deal one damage to any target. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point, DJ. Uh, so, and it was last reprinted in Dual Deck Speed vs. Cunning and or Commander 2013, whichever one of those was more recent. I assume it was the Dual Speed Deck. Speed vs. Cunning was like three years after the Commander yeah, printing, see? so... You're... That's what I said. Yeah. Yeah, it was in like I the Prosh it. deck, I think. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, um, it's, re it's really spiking right now. It's one of those things that 
yeah, I mean, it was worth a, under a dollar for a long time, even, you know, the last several years, and is now moving for whatever reason. So, um, yeah, I, I wasn't I trying to trick you guys up. It's just a card bulk. I wanted to talk about. Because that's been a card I, I'll, forever. I'll definitely find this in bulk. You get a I, commander deck with it in bulk all the time. I, I I bought 200 copies of this when Sam Black built that Zombardment yeah. deck, like, yeah, the deck was eight years ago. The deck was fun. No one cared. The price didn't move. These are in my box of shame. Well, good for you, man. Yeah. Uh, I've managed to suck at MTG Finance into success way more times than not. You can only fail up, man. Yep. There are no misses, only long-term holds. Uh, here's a long-term hold from a few years ago. It is a white-black Cons of Tarkir Uncommon. Chief of the whichever. Ooh. Ooh. Scale. Chief of the your warriors get plus one plus chief zero. Of yeah, chief chief of the warriors. Chief of the edge. <laughs> chief of the edge. Yeah. Chief of the scale gives toughness, and that one of them is obvious. good and one of them is bad. Essentially, as far as bulk goes. Uh they're right? both about or the same equal? price. Okay, roughly. Uh, chief of the edge is you just pull that out of bulk. Um, if you yeah. got a foil version, that's especially now that maybe with Najila, especially. Najila, dun, 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 dun. yeah, exactly. Uh, the the foils are only like fifty cents too. That's um, I'm not saying buy foils because who's foiling out their stupid Najila deck, but <laughs> it's the most somebody. Was, I'm sure it was in the top five two weeks ago. It was in the top three last week, and it was the number one deck on EDH Rec this week. You know, out of all of Battle Bond, Najila seems to be the only thing anyone's really focusing on. Um, I haven't seen Peer and Toothy in like the top twenty-five. I haven't seen. I expected you know, more people really to care anything. about the Planeswalker combo because they seem cool. Yeah, yeah, no. but it's like a little tough to build around them, I guess. That's I what makes it cool. I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, I I have learned not to try to guess no, what people no, I are going to yeah. play. Like I used to, you know, when stuff got announced, I'm like, oh, people are going to play this, and then they didn't. And like I could be mad at people for not playing what I would want to play, but I've learned to just look at the data and being patient, waiting for the data has taught me that you know I get two, three good weeks of picks of the week and breaking bulk out of one deck, and uh, by the time that ship has sailed, we'll have M nineteen commanders to start building around, you know. So uh, I just waited for the data, and uh, that told me that Chief of the Edge is definitely a card to rip out of bulk. That's gonna be. A player. All right, there you go. All right, I think it is time, everybody. Let's talk Vegas. How about that beta draft? I didn't. Uh, I was busy like packing up the booth and driving back to our house, and then resting after like forty-five hours of work. So. Yeah, beta draft was something. I saw Corbin milling around by the stage, and I was like, "Oh, beta draft! It's for beta males." But it turns out they were drafting booster packs of beta. Yeah, it was the lowest hanging fruit possible. You did it. You did gotcha. it. I got gotcha. you. So uh, no, beta drop was crazy. If you aren't aware, C get opened. I watched a Mox Emerald get opened. I watched Paralyze go eighth pick. <laughs> Should we explain Someone how Rochester draft works to people? Because. I mean, so okay, so so the, the quick breakdown is for Magic's 25th anniversary, Wizards slash CFB slash Powers That Be decided to raid the vault. Like, actually raid the, the Wizards of the Coast vault for packs of beta. Sealed they opened no, they opened a sealed box of beta, removed 24 packs, yeah. put 12 packs back in the box, put the box back in the vault. Yep, you know, that's, that's about right. That's, uh, that's what I was told word for word from a Wizards employee. Yeah. They uh, so at Vegas they ran up eight qualifiers. It was like a five round single elimination tournament, then a top eight draft dominaria. Um, the winners made it into the top eight draft on Sunday for the beta draft, and they people had gloves. There were a thousand cameras, or a million people watching, and it was insane. People were Rochester draft, and what that means it is was, each pack it wasn't is a open million indiv- people watching, but it was twenty two thousand people on Twitch, which is <laughs> yeah. more than any uh, Wizards event ever. Yes, I would well, say, except right? for a pro, except for a pro tour. Pro tours get much more than that, but it was the largest Grand Prix moment ever, from what I've heard. Uh, okay, so 
Yeah, it was insane. And there were so many people there on hand for it being Sunday night. You know, everyone usually flies out Sunday night or drives home or whatever, right? Or they're at the casino at that point. But people stuck around. And I worked till 1 a.m., 1 15 a.m. is when I got done on Sunday night because we did this beta draft. We streamed it. But it was worth it because uh, it was insane. Ben Stark, they do Rochester, right? So 24 packs. Each one's opened individually one at a time. And then you pick going around the table until everyone has. A they deck put the way. rare down first, which bugged me. But the, yeah, way the, the only other way, open. the only there was no other way to do it yeah. without without having to mess with the cards. I mean, so Eric Levine, uh, the the one of the best judges in the world, was the, the judge who earned this honor slash responsibility slash. Oh my God! I hope I don't screw up. And uh, all the people were watching him open up these packs, and he had such a good process for slowly carefully opening up the beta pack to not mess up anything inside uh but yeah if we if they were to do the rare last um it would have required a lot more dexterity for managing the cards they said they didn't want to they wanted to minimize handling which yep. it wasn't great for for optics but i guess it was good for hey we didn't bend your stupid card so yeah it was it was a little worse for the viewing experience maybe they'll change it in gen con etc but it was you know this was it was just so crazy. It was so nice to be on hand. It's the only um, I asked. Uh, no one can recall. No Wizards employees cannot recall um, the uh, an event anything like this for a beta draft. I don't think beta had ever really been drafted because well, it almost certainly wouldn't no, have been the set drafted. Wasn't designed I'm, to be drafted at all. You know, but I'm sure 15, 20 years ago, somebody was like, "I right, got a set of beta. You guys want to Rochester it?" Uh, like, but this was the first time the you know in a publicized hyped way this has happened it was crazy you know it was really funny like i did a lot of beta limited on chandelier because like i was just goofing around and i thought that was fun uh watching magic players who were much much better than me not know how to draft beta was really gratifying i got a real <laughs> kick out of it like I... lsv lost because he had like 16 playables because he kept taking ten dollar basics <laughs> what they're they're a little more than that right uh, near Metal uh, one, no, yeah, they're like 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, it was cool. Now, Ben Stark clearly won the draft. Uh, so the, the prize was a beta starter. No, it was an alpha. Alpha no, starter was, and 2,500 cash. So it wasn't, actually when it, it was just 2,500 it, it was cash, was everyone was about starter, it. It was not it? No, they added that at the last minute. It was a beta starter. I held it in my hands. They said alpha starter yeah. all weekend. Would you I even agree. know the difference, Corbin? I agree. That is what was said all weekend. I held it in my hands, and they're like, oh, it's actually beta. So why even bother? I believe, why even bother? Yeah, why, why even, even bother? I think the going number four, the people were getting immediately just on the floor. Uh, the, I heard the going offer was 15K. That's that's that super low. Beta starter. I, I agree. That was the, yeah, that was the baseline. So it's crazy. And the thing is, so Ben Stark clearly won because of the packs he opened, right, his open for the Rochester, he got an underground C. And a Mox Emerald. It's insane. So not only are they worth God knows how many thousands of dollars, right? Um, they also are going to be theoretically in great condition. Like the Underground Sea also looked like it was cut really well. Um, like it was centered and everything, which is an issue on, on some old beta cards can be. Um, but also the fact that it's this Underground Sea. This is the beta draft Underground Sea. The beta draft Mox Emerald. You can point to this. That makes the card worth more. Because these are worth money because they're collectibles. And that ups the collect collectability this is the beta draft helm of chatsuk that yeah, right. went fourth overall in its pack well ben was the only one i think who understood that even the junk rares are worth 300 dollars. like other people i mean and maybe at that point you can argue that you know you should be taking you don't take the like foil goy if you take the the lightning bolt yeah maybe yeah maybe um but but i think people were also taking lands people were like taking lands before cards that were worth money like I, I don't know for sure but i think at some point lands went before a rare because the rare was unplayable or whatever but just due to rarity obviously the those rares were like two three hundred dollars it was nuts the whole thing was crazy i was just so happy to be a part of it it made, it made so me super happy to see pearled unicorns and shit get open in booster packs merfolk of the pearl tried it made me remember fourth edition back in the day busting booster packs of fourth I did like your garbage uh, cards. I, you had a good tweet, Jason. Making fun of me. I'll give it to you. It was solid. Oh, saying you were <laughs> saying it was a expensive draft and everyone was wearing gloves and they let you lumber around the stage. Yep. Is that the one? Yep. I made fun of you a lot that weekend. Notoriously clumsy, and yet 
I was the person holding the camera two inches away from the Beta Underground Sea. Somehow I uh, looked into that responsibility. It was crazy. All right, so what else happened in Vegas, though? I worked a lot. What did you guys Who cares think? about I that? I worked a lot. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It was a, it was a Vegas GP, and uh, Vegas GPs are incredibly exhausting for me because I I do it real hard. <laughs> yeah, as you should. I I eat a really expensive dinner every night. I get real drunk. I gamble a lot. Um, it was a lot of fun. I play a lot of... We were like Battle Bond drafting at like four in the morning just in the hotel not even at a table we just were we were set up where all those cheerleaders were sure when you walk through the hotel like right before you went outside we were just set up at that table battle bond drafting at like 4 a.m nice just stuff like just just not sleeping uh yeah that's not eating well going to fogo to chow and then going to bacchanal eight hours later stuff like that just just debauchery (laughs) And you can only do that for so long. And I was there for Tuesday through Tuesday. Yeah, your body breaks down at some point. <laughs> My one regret. Just says no. And then I, I took the red eye, got a three-hour nap, and I'm still awake now two days later. Like, I don't know. My one regret is that Corbin and I didn't get to go out to eat together at Fogo de Chao. So Corbin Sorry, can man. pay for it? Yeah. Maybe one day. Vegas Eventually. Fogo costs twice what Fogo should cost. I got the I, bill and I'm like, you know, there's just one of me, right? What? It's like a hundred bucks. Yeah, it's like it was like eighty bucks in Vegas. I'm like, this yeah. is like forty five. I mean, Vegas, in Indianapolis. Vegas, man. Yeah. Yeah, we can. I'm not comp- I got the money, but it, it, it was the principle of the thing. I'm like, I Fogo's agree, Fogo. I mean, it's like McDonald's dollar menu being three bucks in Vegas, just like on the strip or whatever. It's like that doesn't make sense. I got hosed by the convention center food more than normal. Like I understand what convention center food is, right? Sometimes it's edible though. Oh, did you did you get sucked into the Quiznos? No, I did not get sucked into the Quiznos, but like I did go get the five dollar and twenty five cent hot dog twice. Oh, look, man, you just got to put calories in your body when you. I put in forty eight hours and three. So does does like does Wizards not pay for your food? Uh, we're on, I mean, we're, we get a per diem, of course, but, uh, so, I mean, yes, they do in that sense, but like, I choose how to spend my money, oh, you know? Okay. So, yeah, usually I try not to eat, uh, like I'll bring a snack, uh, and a drink or whatever, and, uh, I will usually try not to get lunch at a, at a GP, just to not pay convention center prices, right, and just hang yeah. off, but we were just working so long, I, you know, just needed something. Man. We did get tacos yes. and beer uh, delivered, so that was nice uh, on the last. Oh, nice. tacos and beer delivered. Yeah. To, you mean I didn't have to go there four times? The convention center, yeah. <laughs> I li- I literally went to tacos and beer four times in a seven day period. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Marcel was making. He wasn't even impressed. He was like, "Go somewhere else." I'm like, "Up your butt, Marcel." <laughs> Why don't you call your girlfriend and check in once in a while? Got him. Oh got him. That was meta right there, man. That was meta. I get a text from Jason one night, and I just assume Jason's been drinking at this point. I hadn't even left Oklahoma yet. He's like, guys, Marcel is missing. Yeah. And I'm like, Marcel's with JR. He's not missing. We saw They were in a botanical garden. <laughs> Everything was fine. They were it was very peaceful in the botanical garden. They were they were specking hard on Colony Hydra. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, nah, it was slime foot. Oh, God. I just enjoyed when uh, Monday morning, and by morning I obviously mean like 2 p.m. when we all woke up. Because I went to bed about 6.30 uh, Monday morning um, after the event. So, but whatever. I wake up in the afternoon, I just have a text from Jason that says, Did anyone else win $250 and not remember how? <laughs> Yeah, I just woke up with a bunch of money in my wallet, and then I looked at my phone, and there was a picture of a bunch of chips that I texted to my wife. And I'm like, and I just reply, "You're welcome," because I went to Jason. I was like, "Jason, come play crabs with me." And he's like, "No, nah, I'm down money, man. I'm down money, man." I'm like, "Bro, I'm making money. Sit down." And we both won two hundred fifty bucks that night. You're welcome. It was great. In like in like fifteen minutes, I won two fifty. I won money in Vegas. I walked out like plus. 300 for the weekend. It's crazy. There you go. I feel like I did Vegas so wrong. If buffet, if like food counts, I'm down like 800. Well, if food but doesn't if count, food doesn't count then I'm up I'm up like 180. Yeah, yeah, you need it. You eat food at home. It totally doesn't count. Prices don't matter. Okay, yeah, cool. So. Yeah, exactly. So, uh <laughs> a funny story. I'm actually going to be back in Vegas in a few months for the World Championship. So, 
Anyone wants to go off for that one? The world championship of what? Magic. I'm hoping to go up to the world championship of uh, League of Legends for uh, in South Korea in a few months. Well, that esports arena they have set up in Vegas. Wait, you're trying to go to South really Korea? Really sharp. Yeah, uh, Worlds is in Seoul this, uh, Seoul this. No, he's going to North Korea, Corbin. <laughs> No, I just mean, like, that's a long fucking way to go for League of Legends, man. That's cool, though. DJ, you would be super tall in North Korea because they're all malnourished. <laughs> Life goals. But, um, I'm not, the plans aren't uh, set in stone, but, like, the the World's Finals every year is, like, generally around my birthday, so. Uh-huh. Oh, that's fun, man. My goal is to make it out to Overwatch League uh, at some point. I don't super care to go to South Korea to see League of Legends, but I got to make it out to Overwatch League. All right, let's uh, let's read some emails here before we move on. Everyone is, oh man, we are we are bringing you guys this podcast and we're having fun, but we are all beat up from just in Vegas. I'm fine, wrecked. Y'all are, y'all are old. I, yeah, y'all are fine. You know what I, I did drove. on my recovery <laughs> day? My quote unquote recovery day. I hung out with Jr. That's what I did. So. <laughs> I didn't get a recovery day. Yeah, you all I'm are kidding, old. I'm, I'm fine. You all are old. Shut oh. up. It's okay, DJ. <laughs> I got... You worked at a booth till 11, went home and took a nap. Don't yeah, talk DJ to me never about... Even, DJ never even hung out with us. Yeah, it's because I'm old, DJ. That That's DJ why I'm never exhausted hung after out Vegas. With us. <laughs> and we're like, DJ, we're at the casino, man. You coming over? And I'm like, I have to be there in the morning. I've worked all day. I'm here. And DJ's like, I'm in bed, guys. I went back to the Airbnb and curled up in a little... Yeah, I, I'm at the Airbnb. I can't come. It's like a $5 Uber. Sorry, can't make it. <laughs> I got my feety pajamas on my little cap that flops <laughs> over. And my teddy bear. All right, DJ, read us some emails, man. All right, this email comes to us from uh, a future podcast guest. Uh, Ooh. Paul. Right. A $40 patron, yep. a man who went to patreon.com slash brainstorm brewery. Gave us forty dollars a month so they can buy his way onto this podcast. If that sounds too cheap to you, it sounds way too cheap to me. I'm say it's Paul Dij or DJ or Dej. Spell it really. D I G E. D I G E. Well, if it was an O, I'd pronounce it Doge. Therefore, this must be Dij. Right. That's what that, that was my first impression too. But uh, use Dij in a sentence. <laughs> I figured I'd wait a couple months and then hit you guys up to schedule a date. Blah, blah, blah. Since I'm a forty dollars patron, do I get to skip the queue of plebes? Yes, you do. Uh, what are your yes. guys' thoughts on SDCC Planeswalker sets? Do EDH players care enough to pimp out their decks for these versions? Is there even a decent demand profile for them to see meaningful long-term growth? That's the first question. I don't. I don't like them very much. When they, when they did it one time, everyone's like, "Holy shit!" And then when they did them every year, they're like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, like... They don't have new ideas. They're also not as good for Cube as some other foils just because they're so hard to read. Yeah, like, it, right. That's what I was If you get two of those say. in the same pack, you have to get your friggin' magnifying glass out to figure out which one you... Like, it, they're cool and everything, but they're not super practical. I, I would also say that... And yeah. the, the first thing I did when I thought about this was not to go look at them um, exactly. It's, uh, I'll go look at Ugin the Spirit Dragon. The Because that card now has been out for three years... And there was a Ugin's Fate promo, which is probably just as rare, if not more rare, than the, the Comic-Con promos. It's like a masterpiece, maybe, probably. I bet it's less rare than that. I bet it's more rare than a masterpiece. But regardless, and the price on it has done essentially nothing. It's actually worth, like, the exact same price now as it was two years ago. So, <clears throat> the, and I was going to say the same thing about them being so hard to read that they're basically unusable. And now there's so many of them because they've done it multiple years. So yeah. the only ones I would actually think might have a little better upside would be the zombie ones or the hieroglyphic ones or however that worked. I would say I would edge towards like the first print run, actually. Because the first print run was the smallest print run. Yeah. Yes. So I would lean towards... And then there was like everybody who waits in line at San Diego Comic-Con gets one. Yeah. Right. They're just... every San Diego Comic-Con promos have always... It's been a thing for... 20 years where they give out exclusives. I remember, like, people stepping on each other's necks to get this Harry Potter tote bag from HarperCollins. And then at the end of the con, this woman had an arm full of them. I was like, oh, shit, these are 200 bucks on eBay. Give me. And she gave me one. I put it on eBay, and, like, it was going for the cost of shipping. 
So, like, some of that stuff, it's like, okay, we got to have it today. And then no one gives a crap later. Yeah, I, forever, I actually think... remember some of that stuff from, like, Gen Cons. So I feel like I've had the same thing where I've hit some... I, I had one, I was so excited about it, and I sold it on eBay, and then, like, then they weren't worth anything after that. I have Chandra's goggles from, like, a PAX event six years ago. I don't know if they're worth yeah, anything, exactly. but, like... I mean, for what it's worth, the Liliana, the SDCC 2016 Liliana The Last Hope has gone up from about $70 um, at the beginning of this year to almost 100 Well, that's a playable card, um, though. Right. That's that's what I was saying. It's a, it, it, that one makes sense to kind of buck the trend because it's playable. The rest of them are just EDH, dirtily stuff. Like, I was... Cons- They're corset planeswalkers. Like, yeah. Who gives a shit? All right. Part two... How much of the recent dual land price spikes are due to the increased number of legacy events this year? Is there a chance that we see CFB or Star City push for more legacy events in the future in an effort to maintain demand and the new price levels? Nah, I think the dual land push has been like uh, Team FOMO and people cashing out their crypto. Well, Well, like Star City and Channel aren't a whole other discussion. Star City and Channel aren't incentivized to keep prices high. They are not the logistical. The logistics aren't there for them to create events that didn't exist previously to try to sell duels at a brand new, very high price that people are already like hard, like on the fence about paying. They're not just going to make a bunch of legacy events to just try to promote like seven hundred dollar underground seed. If anything, especially since SCG dropped the format fucking hard when people were playing it every weekend. Yeah. Right. Plus. Plus. You're, it's not even like the only way they could possibly be incentivized to do that is if they're just sitting on a ton of them and couldn't move yeah. them, right? But that's just not – it's just not – that's just not like, a thing, the initial, right? Like you're always going to sell your underground Yeah, series. the initial question was how much of the recent price spike is due to the increased number of legacy events this year. I think that's a small part of it, but um, yeah. overall it's just like the supply on stuff is just starting to dry up. And like the, the, the price corrections like for power and all this other stuff just like – it's going to keep going up. But that's just like the way it is. Well, Jason Jason mentioned crypto and it's a good point because it is. a lot of the people who have the money to dabble around in $1,000 dual lands are also the people who had money to play around with crypto. And crypto made people a lot of money over the past 18 months. Now, I know it's cool to, to crap on crypto this year because since it you know, we call crashed that crap in January. Dough. Yeah, it, it, since it crashed in January, it's been really down slash flat, whatever. People made a lot of money last year on it. And they cashed it out at the end of the year because they need needed to pay their taxes because the government is now much more difficult in the United States on this. So you actually have to pay capital gains tax on what you gain in crypto. So a lot of it came out for those reasons. Uh, and, and I'm not going to get super deep into the crypto market, blah, blah, blah. The point is a lot of people who are the typical magic type nerd who've been into the crypto market for a long time had a lot of money to spend. Yep. And... Underground C uh, is so expensive right now, and it's going to cool off over the next six months. You know, the 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 beginning of the year push we see every year was much more tame or much more wild this year, but it's still more it's still the same thing. It's just a larger jump, a much larger jump, to be fair, a much much larger jump. But it's still this. It's it, there's no reason to believe it won't follow the same trend. Um, especially now after Vegas, you know, this was definitely the high water point, I believe, of the year. Everyone sets their sights on Vegas. All roads lead to Vegas. Now everyone's crypto money is spent or whatever, whether it was on power or underground seas or whatever. Their tax money is spent. We're going to get into the back half of the year. People are going to have school. They're going to have holidays. It's going to be the winter. All this stuff that typically where you see the prices cool off. And I think that's where we're at now. So, if you're it, now is not the time if you are like man I just, do i need to get my underground seas right this moment no like you needed them six months ago or you need them at any point over the next six months so just that's my opinion now it's possible that it bucks the trend that it's done for the past five years but i don't have a reason to believe it will do that we had trouble selling duels this weekend i was behind a booth for 60 hours over the course of four days and duels did not sell as well as uh We'd expect power moved very well. Power and old school were very real, and there's still stragglers out there like old school is not a real format. It's the frontier of legacy, <laughs> whatever. Old school is yeah. very, very real. 
it's very real to the people who play it, and it doesn't have to be a lot of people who well, play it. Well, that's the thing. Is that it it's, it's a real thing, and it is absolutely a format where you could probably make money if you are interested in the format to a genuine degree. It is not a. It is not even close to something that you should try to get into if you don't know what's going on there. Um, right. it's, it's, it's sort and of it's like not, crypto. It's sort of like crypto, where, like, if you don't know anything about crypto and you're like, what are all these bite coins? Like, don't, don't fucking touch it. If you're really good at EDH and you really love EDH and you know how the market works, you know how, like, cards move, you know what's good, you know what's bad, then you're going to make money in EDH finance. If you know, if you used to play 20 years ago and you're actually interested in playing these old school cards and you genuinely care about the, the cards and you know what was good, what's bad, how the meta moves, then there's room for you to make money. But, like, if you're just, like, a modern player who's like, oh, yeah, there's all this money in old school and in crypto, just don't. Just don't. Yeah. Well, it's interesting to compare it to Frontier or, uh, let's say, Tiny Leaders or whatever, because those were formats that were supposed to be for the masses. And when people, for those formats to succeed, they had to be played at a store level, et cetera. That's not how old school works. Old school is played by people with a bunch of money who have the money to go to GPs to play old school, right? Well, like, no, 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 what it's it, not even that. Like, old school is also being played by, like, people who are keeping, it's kind of like Smash where, like, old school forums are popping up and, like, people are just driving the format by a grassroots level and like creating yeah that's what i'm saying there are people who really want to do it and it's the thing that appeals to them the most in magic and they have the resources to make well, it happen they're letting you're you not gonna play, run like, into they're letting you play like ce stuff and like fbbs yeah. and like or, like revised like garb like fourth edition like it's you can still play but like most old school formats or most old school events will allow like 10 to 20 proxies or whatever like it's not just like a rich kids club I mean, it's kind of a rich. It started as one, but like the the involvement and the interest is generated to a point where like they're having to, the rules are constantly changing and like oh should we allow this type of thing because it's cheaper and it'll get more people in the format yeah. yeah sure like it started as just like a very strict you have to play this style of magic or else you're not one of the cool kids and it's over the course of not even two years it's evolved to a point where you can just play a lot of different it's certainly things. become it's certainly become more inclusive I yes. mean. I, I, what I guess what I was saying is that I don't think the metric for success for old school is the same as you'd apply to something like front. Correct. You know, that, that's a good like you don't old old school to for old school to be successful. It doesn't mean you have to be playing it on a Tuesday night in your old. Yes, right? I agree. That's that's the difference. And that is it for Paul's email. We will see you at some point right. in the next couple of months. Yeah, man. We've been doing an email it. for the last hour. That's crazy. <laughs> Hit us with an email. Hit us with the next one. All right, all right. Uh, sure, let's pick this guy, I guess. His name is Ben. Hey, Ben. Uh, paid for hey ben. a new $10 patron after being a long-time listener. My question is, we split magic in eras. Reserve list era, old school to Ice Age, older era, Mirage to modern... Zendikar era, popularity explosion, and RTR era printing through the roof. Are these fair? How would you how would you categorize? I don't know if English is this person's first language, but that's fine. Why do we bother with those eras anyway? Like, well, eras. that's that's I don't know. Why is this useful to considering financials? When is a card considered old, and what era are we in currently? Yes, Jason, I consider oh, all of this era. one question. The question comes off the back <laughs> of the pick, pick of Druid Repository and Aversum Restored, labeled as quote old enough. Keep up the good work. Hope you make it out to the UK sometime. European biolists are awful. I believe that. Uh, that's an interesting question because there is some value to this, right? I think we say post, post mythic era a lot. Yeah. Um, and I think that tells you a lot because you know offhand that that means that the rares are going to be worth a lot less and the mythics are going to drive the value on average, right? Um, I mean, yeah, I think that's, that wasn't the case I think that's fair. Like, I, I would combine old era with like all the way up until mythic era like i'd say onslaught and shards of alara are like relatively similar on a grand scale interesting i mean this like, uh, so i guess the point is there there is some value to doing this stuff right knowing that something's in yeah. a it, you know there's also the first however many years of magic and i don't know what it is offhand but we actually know the print run numbers up to and it's not true. i think it's I think anymore. it's the dark or like Arabian Nights. I think I don't know. Yeah, so like that's an era where 
I mean, you actually know how much was printed, so you know yeah. how rare sets are in relation to each other. Um, so there's hero, value hero. In, in knowing that. I mean, uh, this, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, this. It, it, the the divisions are arbitrary and they don't help you right. do anything yeah. other than like have a podcast. So, <laughs> like, if you want to tell people some like goofy, it's like, oh, this is in the post mythic era. Then yeah, like make up some snazzy <laughs> stuff like that. But for the most part, you're not. I think, gonna, I guess like, what I'm saying is there is there is. Yeah, you know, I mean, the, for the question was, is there any value to it? Right. I think post post mythic is a good one. I also think the age of reprints is a an interesting one, but I don't know if I necessarily would say, oh, in Return of Ravka, they start printing things through the roof. I think it's maybe just more, at some point in the past five to six years, they have decided to reprint everything as much as possible all the time. Um, but that's not that's not relegated to just the new cards. You know, they're also reprinting older stuff whenever they get the chance. All right. Next one, Zachary Kihoe. Hey, Brew Crew and Perma Against DJ, I finally gave in to the repeated pitches made by Jason every cast and signed up mostly for the after hours. Since we now mm-hmm. know that the fall set will be yet another return to Ravnica, do you think we should be expecting Shockland reprints? If so, are there financial implications? Ooh, that is a big question, isn't yes. it? Yes. Sure, and if there are, buy them when they're cheap. Yep. Uh, do you think you think they're getting reprinted? I'd say, yeah. I hope so. I think i Ninety percent sure they're getting reprinted. I really hope so. I hope they don't do something stupid. I see two possibilities. One, they get reprinted. That's what I would prefer. Either they do or they uh, don't. Good analysis. Yeah, that's true. No, but uh, they could give us something like the Battle Bond Lands or something decent. What, that what I'm suggesting is they Shocklands when they first came out, obviously blah blah blah, super popular. They go back to it. Everyone wants the Shocklands again. They get them. Now, third time in, it's like. Does it feel, I don't know, is trite the word to reprint them? Is it just like, it, it, this is just like, it's almost lazy. If I can see if I'm a designer or whoever's responsible for this decision with Wizards, is it just feel lazy to just do it again? Maybe but they want to do something else. Maybe like they want to do something that's on the same they, level. Is it lazy to do... Maybe, a but third maybe, Iron Man movie. Like, but, but I, I think maybe, just give people what they want. Yeah, but maybe... But you, it's also true that people don't know what they want until you give it to them. Maybe they're going to, like, up the Did ante here. Did you just here. pull some Malcolm Gladwell spaghetti sauce <laughs> lecture bullshit on me? My I mean, God, it's just man. true. It's just that true, man. That is a good point. That is what, a good point. Maybe it's like, it's like the, the Commander Lands, or we just got a Battle Bond, right? Like, I really thought about that. We didn't know that, we wanted those. Yeah, and, hey, Corbin, fucking hats off, too, because I DJ and I thought those would dip to, like, two bucks, but they're holding five, six bucks. Thank and you. it seems like people are basically done opening Battle Bond, so I, yeah, Battle I Bond think got those. Crunched. I was going to bring hell... up that doubling season has also seemed to flatline at forty. Yeah, they, the, nothing dipped as much as we thought it was going to. No so... one opened it. <laughs> well, so no many... one opened because, like, yeah, that like the drafts are cool, and then it's like, all right, we're done with Battle Bond. I'm not buying a box of that. Yeah. And raw they had, it. and they had a lot of issues with the release and the way they marketed it. And Bruce Richard wrote a really good article on TCG Player about it um, a week or two ago with all the issues surrounding Battle Bond that are not the cards inside of Battle Bond. Um, but I, I guess what I'm saying is I think it's possible that maybe they decide I'm not just going to, we're not just going to reprint Shocklands. We're going to give some people something on the level of Shocklands. I think that's a possibility. So then the next I, I, follow-up I, after that is I, where do you, yeah, but, where do you hit Shocklands to make sure that Stomping Grounds isn't the next like wooded foothills or like, isn't the next Scalding Tarn? I don't want the, uh, I don't want a land that is to Stomping Grounds what Gruel Cluestone is to Gruel Signet. I don't want that. I'm not going to buy it. If the they boxes. did that, that would be considered a failure. I agree. Which is, it's just the thing is, we always see wizards. They, they, and I think Mark Rosewater said this a million times. It's like, yeah, reprinting cards is cool, but why would we reprint cards when we can print something new that and cool that people want? Now, in this case, they know that people want Shocklands. So I think they know that they can't grew glue stone it. Right? Shut up and if play the hits. That, if they go that route. So. That's what we want. Shut up and play the hits. I Give agree. us our. Give, give me a four dollar stomping ground that I can jam in an EDH deck. Just yeah, they got just give those, us that. those shocks are getting expensive again. They're getting up there. So. Yeah, and I mean getting it's it's definitely going to be one of those things where enough people expect it, and enough people are going to hold off on buying shocklands up until the That's announcement. Also true. So like That's when Battle for Zendikar, 
we had thirty dollars scrolling tards or whatever, and then Mark Rosewater makes one Tumblr post that says, "Hey, they're not in there," and then we have seventy dollars scalding tards because everyone was holding their like holding their money. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I guess if we get some sort of in concrete indication that they're not in there, the financial implication is ah. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So I guess stay on top of the market now. If they do get reprinted, I imagine it'll be ten bucks, right? Uh, probably lower. Do you think eight to ten? I think lower. Do you think really? no? There's think, no. I mean, like, every, but they're six, still playable and standard. They'll be really Fountain good. Standard. Like seven right now. Yeah, but Howard Fountain's not getting played in anything. Well, it's in just. I mean, it's play, just not as much as some of the like, others. I, not as much as it's going to be if there's a deck in standard for it. Yeah, DJ, what you're not counting for, accounting for is that it's seven dollars now, but it's also seven dollars in standard. I guess I, to be fair, when I was thinking, I was thinking of the more expensive ones. Right, and there I, is actually enough of a gap between them all now that it is hard to uh, say. I think they all get cut in half. Okay. Ta-da. I don't think that Hallowed Fountain would be $3, but okay. Or th- Dude, I'll think- take every $3 Hallowed Fountain. So oh, I'm yeah, telling. that's what I'm saying. I don't think it would be $3, but uh, but sure. I think they... Uh, it sounds like we think probably 4 or 5 on the low end, 10 on the high end for the, the more expensive ones now. Yeah. And it also would fluctuate in the lifetime they're in standard based on what's good. Yes. But like I, I think eight would be like the cap. Okay, I hope so. I hope that's true. I want. Right, you got you got another email. I want a dozen in, or two dozen of these. Uh, do we have an email? All right, let's uh, let's talk out some. Picks it's your of whole the job. It's then. your whole job to know if we have an email, DJ. Whole what job. are you asking us for, man? Do we have an email? I don't know. All right, let's do pick of the week. Pick of the week. Pick of the week. Pick of the week. Time for the pick of the week. I'll go first. Uh, I've got one. Why do you get to go first? Uh, I have one as well. So, Shalai, Voice of Plenty. A very powerful card, as it turns out. Uh, 3 4, Flyer for 4. You, you, Planes of Arts, you control another creature, you control Hexproof, and for 6 mana, Green Man, you put a count on each creature. So, there's a card in M13. Um, I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it's a 3 3 flying angel for 3. For um, and splendent then angel. I'm sorry, you what? said M13. Uh, yeah, it'd be M19, huh? It's because it was a 3 3. I had 3 on my brain. Uh, yeah, so it's a 3 3 for 3 in M19. That is an angel that if you gain 5 or more life this turn, then you get an angel or something else in play. It's very powerful, right? And then we also have Lyra. At five mana, which is a five five flying life linker, and gives all your angels plus one plus one. Lear is a mythic, already expensive to an extent. Shalai is actually the one between the two of those cards that sees some modern play, not a lot, but a little bit. Uh, and this new one come out, Angel Stompy and Standard. I think people are going to try it. But there's just, no, there's they, no reason to run it just angels well, because Lyra's like the there's no. L- L- Lyra pumps angels, yeah. And you get Mat- yeah, other you got the no, 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 no. metallic unclaimed mimic. territory. Add metallic and... mimic into that curve. Ooh. I mean, I guess that's also true. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, metallic mimic into whatever the new one is into Shalai into Lyra. Plus, you um, got unclaimed territory, which is you know great for your mono white deck. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, the thing is, like this, the mono white life gain deck or the black white life gain deck, it's kind of a thing already. Um, and at the top end of it, you have. Oh, this is... Uh, I'm forgetting. But there's something else that makes a bunch of things if you gained life. There's a thing that makes a bunch of things. I'm trying to remember what it is. You're talking about Regna that makes two 1-1 no, soldiers no, no, it's if you gain from, life? It's something thing? from Ixalan, I think. Hmm. It was... I'm sorry, I can't remember it right now. I apologize for forgetting the card name. But the point is there was a deck that has been played... Use the, the thing Grand that Prix makes level. a bunch of things, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But it was played <laughs> at the Grand Prix level. And it makes uh, some sort of token. Um, so one of the vampire cards from Ixalan. Uh, that triggers off of life gain. So the the point is there was already something there, and now we're getting even more pieces to it. So uh, I'm picking Chilai at $2 because that's the one that has modern playability and has a lower buy-in right now. For what it's worth, Lyra has also bottomed out at $12 market price. Um, but I, I like the lower buy-in one there more because uh, Shalai is also played in modern to a little bit. Nice. Yeah, Corbin, what, what sets that from? M19. Yeah, that's the one. Man, not M13. It's, it's been a week. Like I know, man. I know. 19 is not what you prefer, but it is the one that's legal. It's the horse. I'm talking about the horse, Crested Sun Mare. So oh. the horse vampire from Ixalan. 
Well, it's played in a vampire deck in standard, is what it was. Uh-huh. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's a real thing. I know. I know. I'm sorry. If you get it, it's a five drop, five, five, other horse have been destructible at the end of incept. If you gain life, create a five, five white horse creature token. Uh, I'm not taking played, that out of my horse's deck. It's played in a tribal, it's played at the top end of a tribal vampire deck. So metallic mimic on a horse or angel. Yeah. Either way, point is, Shalai, I think, seems to have bottomed out around that $2 market price mark. So, all right, who wants to go next? Champion of I got it bottomed out. Champion of I call, Did I not call that last week? No, you called Miri last week, and then you called Druid's Repository before that. Yeah. So champion what do you of like Lamehole? about Champion of Limehole? Uh, it, it like? actually just got reprinted in the Commander Anthology 2, but the supply on those isn't super high, and... Right. I don't think this is like a buy it now at one and then it goes to five dollars immediately just because there is that supply. But this is the kind of EDH card that will likely creep up to three over time. It just yeah. wants to go in a lot of decks because it's really good in Nigella specifically. It's so because good when you get those attacks in your soldiers or your warriors that are being created pump champion of Lampole and then getting champion of Lampole's power higher now makes those warriors able to uh, get in unblocked. Be unblockable. Yeah. 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 Jamie Lane has been up and down the price. I mean, this thing was three bucks back in the day. Bottomed out at Volker status fifty cents. Climbed back up over two dollars. Well, it bought, it bought a lot because of the reprint. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's 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 a lot. Now it's getting away from that reprint. Well, tires. not even then. It like twenty fourteen. It bottomed out. That's when it was bulk. And then the reprint actually brought it up. Like it was in twenty commander twenty sixteen. Which means it came out in 2015, and that's when the price started climbing. It was, oh, hot damn. It was in C16. That's what I'm saying. Which means it came out in the fall of 2015, yeah. right? Or yeah. So um, it kind of done. It did that thing we've talked about sometimes, where sometimes a commander set sh- shows people a card that they didn't know existed before, because uh, it was kind of a forgotten. You know, it's just an Amazon restored card. Well, plus like stuff has come along where it's really good, like it tracks on Angry Omnath and shit like that. So like. You know, decks of that have wanted it have come along too. Uh, I have something in real similar to DJ, something that was reprinted in a commander deck that is going up, predicated on Najila. Mine is Den Protector, Den originally Protector, from okay. Dragons of Tarkir in Commander 2016, and there's a pre-release promo foil version. And that's about all we got. These are like a buckish. It's it's like, an e-witness, man. Like a dollar. It's uh, it's not quite any witness, but it's sometimes better, sometimes worse. Yeah. Uh, it's not as great in blinky decks, but like Den Protector's got it's uh it's got places where it's good, and uh it's it's a warrior, it's a human warrior that matters. So it is uh, uh it is basically bulk. It was in Commander 2016, so it's got nowhere to go but but up. It's certainly an easy. Uh, yeah, man. I was looking at a risk. bunch of cards. Champion of Lambholt's one of the ones I was looking at this week. So, like, DJ and Eric are kind of on the same wavelength this week. It's, uh, Najeel's making stuff do stuff. Go buy those dollar cards and watch them hit three over a year or two. So, uh, Najeel was in the top five decks on EDH Rec two weeks ago. I looked last week, it was in the top three, and this week it's number one. So, wow. Najeel, right. yeah, the number That's one deck cool. built this week. So... It's it's getting there, man. People are excited about this card and everything else. And Battle Bond, they're sort of not building as much as we thought. Kind of thought Peer and Toothy, or maybe like the the Knight and the Dragon pairing, or maybe the Planeswalkers. Thought maybe yeah, they'd get there, it but seems really, like Battle Bond's just been forgotten. Najila's like the only thing anyone's going to remember. Najila well, in the lands. Battle Bond's out two weeks, and they're doing M nineteen spoilers. Yeah. So oh like, yeah. I mean, it was. Speaking of, I mine went up today. Omniscience. And M19. M19 looks crazy. We'll talk about it more next week, I'm sure, but it's a lot of good Omniscience, stuff. Crucible. By next week, we're going to know everything, because yeah. uh, by, by Friday, which is the day this podcast comes out, the whole set will be fully spoiled, and you'll be like, why didn't you use the dope? Because we didn't know. So many cool things so far, but I'm excited to talk about it next week. It looks pretty exciting for a core set. All right. Anything else you guys want to talk about before we jump Okay, out of so this here's week? the deal. I'm going to say it's Tuesday now. I'm calling Liliana of the Veil. Ooh, in a nineteen, and by the time this podcast comes out, I'll either look like a genius or I'll look like a, just a dude who That's got drunk true. and shot his shot. So either, if I'm wrong, so what, dude? I'm you said there were rumors on the internet about it. Is that people? Just, if I'm you right, think it's just hope. Are people just I'm right, wishful I'm thinking? I'm so smart. Yeah, it's just hope. Whatever. Unless it's a thing. It's, unless it's, it's all unless hope it is Liliana, the last hope. It could be Liliana, the last hope. Could be Liliana, 
Vess. It could be. It could be, be Liliana, Liliana Vess. It could be five Liliana Vess. It's like an eight dollar card. Yeah. So, could be any Liliana. I, 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 I would have said no, but then this set went and put Omniscience and Crucible. Yeah, man. And... The Crucible is just. Well, one of the arguments that Jim Casar. One of the arguments that Jim had was that there's a uh, Loxon and Smiter esque card in a Johnny's Last Stand. It's true. That's um, true. Which is the four mana enchantment that does a thing. But the other thing it does is if it, your opponent makes you discard it, you get a 4 4 avatar with. I think S flying, but. You get an avatar that punches that Lily right out, so that is that is an argument to suggest that Liliana of the Veil of the vale was hey. included in the set with uh, precautionary measures. I would have said I didn't no know what to about it, any but... of that. All I knew was just that I felt like shooting my shot on this podcast for posterity. So right, hey, there you go. By the time you guys are listening, uh, unless you're a Patreon, it goes to Patreon.com/slash/BrainstormBrewery. <laughs> And gets this podcast a little bit early. You're hearing this on a Friday, and you're like, "Jason is so smart." Liliana was spoiled on Thursday, and we're in awe of him and his prowess. Wow, there you go. Okay. Or it gets, or a Liliana gets spoiled tomorrow, and then we just edit the pod. We take all this out and post. <laughs> all right, everyone. There you go. Called shot from Jason in things tonight. We survived another year of GP Vegas. See y'all next time. Uh, am I gonna do it next year? Yeah. Every every year I say oh, no, yeah. and every year oh, I go. And then every year go you buy a squatty potty. potty. Have you ever? Why don't you come out from everybody. behind the booth? What'd you say, go fellas? Why don't you just go to GP to go to GP? I'd like to. Why, on these. Why you I work? was in DC. Like I was in DC, like and not behind the booth, and you weren't there. In one of these years, I'm gonna go to Vegas again. Missing. Everyone, this is Brainstorm Brewery. Buy a Squatty Potty. SquattyPotty.com slash BSB. SquattyPotty.com slash BSB. All other podcasts are number two. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Wiki, wiki, wiki.